Hey guys, I'm Fancy, and you're watching the Good Wives Network. And I'm back! So I'm hoping some of you will join me. So let's see if anybody comes in. I'm hoping, hoping. Some of you, hoping I get some joiners. I hope everybody's enjoying the eclipse today. Has anybody had it pass through there yet or not? I'm not really sure. I'm not really paying much attention to it. Hi guys, hi everybody, hello, coming in, hi, hi, how are you today? Hey guys, hey, hey everyone. Hey Christy, hi Lynn, hi everybody. Hey Heather, I'm gonna go ahead and mod you. Um, add a moderator, confirm, okay. Hold on, I wanna make you manage moderator access. Okay, awesome. Hey everybody, hi, hi. I'm back finally. You guys crazy, right? Um, So far I've only got my one mod in here. If any of my other mods are here, can you please let me know so I can mod you because I haven't been able to go live on this channel for the longest time. So um, this is actually my very first live over here on Spicy Red 92. <laughs> How is everybody today? Are you guys enjoying your day? I kind of feel like the world is just a little bit off right now. There's so much going on. And we're going to talk about a lot of the things that happened this last week on um, April Fool's Day. We got like so many updates on so many of the cases that we are actually been following. Um, there was Nick's Appeal came out. Um, there was something with Alex Murdoch. Uh, there was something with the Delphi case, all this crap about Diddy's coming out. It was a very, very odd week last week, and I felt like it lasted forever. Did you guys feel that? Did you feel like it was lasting forever last week? Because I'm, so, I'm telling you, like Wednesday, I felt like the week just slowed down, right? I mean, that's how I felt. I don't know. I, a lot of people I talked to said that they felt like last week was like the longest week of the of their lives. And it felt that way to me. And a lot of stuff happened. I mean, a lot of stuff happened. Um, so, guys, please tap and share. Tap and share. It helps me out. Um, and if any of you would like to mod, if you're one of the mods that I know, please let me know so that I can... Um, so that I can help you guys get, get started doing so. Um... Okay, shortcake. Thank you. Thank you, shortcake. Wonderful. Okay, guys. So today I was in another live and I was watching, um, I think it was Hannah's live. I don't know. Or Ellie. They, those were the ones that were up there. I know Bazinga was in there too. Um, and they were talking about this discovery that, um, this discovery of me and Colleen um, finding this chromosome disorder. And I want you to understand kind of how we came to this and what it really means. Um, cause there seems to be a lot of misinformation going out and, um, Colleen and I already did a pretty long, extensive, uh, going over of this from starting in 2000 all the way up to 2011 and it's on our youtube channel and you can go watch that right now and colleen gives a very short detailed explanation of this exact chromosome disorder um, she has a chromosome deletion and it is of the 1q21.1 chromosome and she's got a pretty large deletion of it um and so if you go to rare chromo.org they have an entire pamphlet and we've put it out we've put it out on our our pages we've put it on all over social media along with the document from the medical records that proves what this is and when they discover it okay and so i want to go back all the way to the beginning here and kind of talk a little bit about why the chromosome disorder was missed by us for a while, why we had some debates about it a long time ago, and where we're at today with it and how we came to this. So when I first started reaching out to the Blanchards and talking with them, one of the first questions I did ask Christy was, what was it that Dee Dee first told you that Gypsy had? And the very first words she typed to me, she typed several others, you know, she said seizures and blah, 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 and then it was this and that. But the very first thing she said was 
chromosome disorder, okay? Now, if you go watch any of the documentaries, I'm going to tell you, you're going to hear chromosome disorder mentioned over and over and again. Rod mentions it. Christy mentions it. They do. They talk about this. That's what Dee Dee was telling everyone, chromosome disorder, okay? So, um, I didn't really pay it much mind because at the beginning, I just thought it was some bullshit she made up, right? Because we didn't know what really any of this meant. And it wasn't until the, you know, coming to TikTok and reevaluating this case that I started thinking about that chromosome disorder again. And let me explain to you why. So for years, after I released the interrogation video is when Christy then started giving me the medical documents. And I think she did that 1Q21.1. Thank you, Cookie Cat. Thank you very much. Um, and she was, um, basically, I feel like I got the medical records at that point in time so that I would be running circles instead of looking at the case files and the evidence. Because what I had done was started putting together the inconsistencies in their stories surrounding the Schmurder. So Christy comes up and goes, hey, you can have these. Um, you can have these now. Gypsy totally knows I'm going to do this because she still wants to know her whole history. But here's the thing, guys. They already had those medical records. They got them from HBO before she took her plea deal even. Okay, so there's a lot to this. But I want to stay focused on the chromosome disorder itself today. So... I was looking through the case file again, and it's mentioned in the case file, okay? And so it's mentioned by Kimberly Blanchard, who is David Blanchard's wife, and they are two of the people that were heavily involved in the Vigicon that her and Dee Dee were always at, you know, where she met Dan, where she had that relationship with a guy in a hotel room, all those things. Hey, Pink Cat Sarah. Baby, um, I would love for you to come up um, and I will let you guys come in the box and we'll discuss this, but let me get through at least talking a little bit about it, okay? Um, let me share this out, share this out, share this out, share this out, share this out. There we go. Okay, so yes, the behavior, the air tubes, the mouth shape, all of it plays into this, okay? But so I was in the case files. And in the case file, when they're talking with Kimberly Blanchard and she makes the statement that Gypsy isn't like the rest of us, she's not going to live to be very old, correct? I'm sure you guys know about this, right? She makes a statement that cops ask her why she thinks that. And the very first thing she says is chromosome disorder. So I saw it in there and I started really thinking, I just think... You know, I had talked with the Tarrant County investigator out of Texas who had really got me understanding medical child abuse versus calling it any of the other stupid things we call it, Munchausen by proxy or factitious disorder imposed about another or any of those things. And I sat and I talked with him and I said to him, okay, I hear what you're saying and that seems like <laughs> the chickens. <laughs> That seems like a much better explanation to me than anything else. I said, but you know what, Mike? I'm sorry. I still don't think it's Munchausen by proxy. I don't think it's fictitious disorder imposed upon another. And I don't think that it's even medical child abuse. And I know they're all the same, but they do have, you know, you kind of categorize them differently. People attribute different things, okay? They each come with a different connotation, but they're all the same thing. You know, and I just, he tried to explain it to me in the simplest of terms because he was like, if you take away all the subjectiveness about it and you boil it down to this is child shaboos, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it or not, okay, and that's all it is, then it no longer matters the motive, the operandi, none of those things cease to exist anymore. They don't matter in that. So they are, you know, so those things fall away and you can just call it what it is and that's abuse, okay? So uh, that got me thinking and I had asked him, you know, I'd really like you guys, this board to take a look at these, um, the records, because no one's ever looked at them. No from Munchausen by proxy expert or factitious disorder imposed upon another or medical child abuse, whatever you want to call it, expert has ever seen her medical records, not ever. They've never talked to her. They've never talked to her family, none of that. 
So when Feldman made that statement, he had nothing to go on other than what he was being told by HBO. Okay. Yes, the pen head shape, everything, it all fits. And I did a doc, I, I did a whole thing showing you all the different stuff. So you can go find it. It's on here. It's on my YouTube. It's all, on all my social media platforms everywhere. Okay. Uh, so that got me thinking. And I said, Colleen, I think we really need to look at these records again. Because Mike was like, well, you know, fancy, I give me a year and I'm retiring and I'll be happy to look at them for you at that point in time. And I'm going to see if the board will want to look at them. But we're going to want to get paid, you know, obviously. And I'm like, yeah, well, it would be for the documentary we're putting together. So, of course, absolutely, we would we would be happy to do that. You know, I just need to know what you guys would want. Um, so I, I'm working, you know, talking with him through all of this. And I told Colleen, I said, you know, I really think we just need to start relooking at the medical records again. And for whatever reason, the chromosome disorder had really stood out to me over the last, no, I'm not going to watch the eclipse. I've seen a million of them. I'm almost 50 years old, <laughs> you know, but, um, um, so I got lost. Hold on a second. So I started thinking about the chromosome disorder because when I was going through and looking at old messages from Christy and everyone, it came up over and over again, okay? That chromosome disorder was something I was hearing on the documentaries because I was rewatching them and I was reading it in the text messages. And I was like, okay, I think we really have to look at this. So I asked Colleen to find it because back in the day, when Titania, Dee Dee's best friend, um, was still in charge of the medical records, the chromosome disorder was found in the medical records at that time. They were found in the 204 page document and a couple others that are included in our Patreon. However, the most important documents we've already put out for you guys to see all over the public, okay? But this is where we found it, was in this mess of documents that were sent from Louisiana to Missouri for Dr. Steele. And it happened in 2005, okay? In 2007, he finally sends her to Dr. Flasterstein. And Flasterstein is the one that says, hey, I think something's really wrong here. This isn't tracking right. I don't know what's going on. Um, it could be Munchausen by proxy. He sends that back to Dr. Steele. Dr. Steele does nothing, nothing for two more years until he calls in a wellness check and, you know, supposedly says it's on kidnapping. We'll get into that another time because that shit's bullshit. He's lying on his freaking documentaries. This is crazy. They all are lying because they're covering their asses. Okay. So, um, so I was thinking about that and Dr. Steele didn't call it until 2009, okay, as something wrong. Then he continued to see her the entire rest of her medical career, history with the, with, with, until 2011 when she stopped going to the doctors at all, okay? So Titania had brought to my attention that she thought she had found this chromosome disorder and that Gypsy had it. And Colleen and her were arguing about it. Now, I also want you to know at this time, Colleen had not finished her master's degree. She was still, um, she, I don't think she'd gone back to college for it yet when we did all of this, okay? So, um, so Titania and her were going at it because Colleen had one document that basically said, hey, we ran some preliminary tests. It doesn't look like she has it. Um, so blah, blah, blah. So Colleen was like, oh, no, it came back negative. And Ty kept telling Colleen, no, it came back positive. I swear to you, it came back positive. But here's the thing. She would never give Colleen that document to look at. She was hoarding it. She was keeping it for herself. And I don't know why. Um, and she came to me. And I think Ty always wanted to be the one in charge of the medical stuff. And she really just wasn't, she wasn't equipped to be that for a variety of different reasons. And it's not to say she's a bad person or she's not knowledgeable. It just wasn't, she, she just wasn't the right person for that. And Colleen really is. And so when Colleen took over, you know, 
she, we, we had put the chromosome disorder aside. We just didn't even think about it anymore. But Titania had come to me and talked to me about it. And she's like, Fancy, I really think she has this. And it's really important. But she didn't understand what it was. She didn't do any research on it. She didn't tell me what it meant. Okay. And so I just kind of dismissed it. And she, uh, she went to Christy about it as well. And she told Christy, hey, I think you need to have Mia tested for this because I think Gypsy has this chromosome deletion of 1Q21.1. One, one Is that it again? I always forget the letters and numbers in the order. Somebody drop it in the chat for me, please. Um, so I was sitting there thinking to myself, um, you know, I, Christy and I talked about it a little bit. And I was like, I don't know, Christy. And she's like, well, I don't think so. I mean, it's all false anyways, right? And I mean, we kind of were operating under that assumption. And that's why in 2015, when we did, or 2019, sorry, when we did our podcast, 1Q21.1. See, I did say it right. Okay, thank you very much, guys. So when I did my podcast, when the three of us sat down and did the podcast, we still were operating under the assumption that everything in the medical records was total bullshit. Okay? But thinking about it in terms of abuse, instead of the names that we've been talking about, I think really gave me a fresh look at this and Colleen a fresh look at this. So she was searching and she found the preliminary report at first. No, I'm sorry. The first document she found was a document that said in the files that she had this deletion, but we didn't know where it had come from. So when we saw that originally, we just thought Didi made some shit up, which you know, thinking about it now, I'm like, how would Didi have known to make that up? Yes, she was a nurse's aide, but she was not a nurse, okay? She was not. She didn't even work for the hospital for very long. But guess who worked with her at that hospital? Christy. And the Claude Seniors, her stepmother, Laura. They all three worked there at one time, and there was lots of problems at that time, okay? Just side note, other stories. Thank you guys. Hey, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep tapping. Keep tapping. We're talking about Gypsy's chromosome disorder today. So, um, so Colleen found that. And then I said, no, Colleen, I remember you guys had it out about, remember you and Ty had this out. Um, and no, it's not how they met. No, no. They knew each other in high school, Christy and Dee Dee. Um, Dee Dee was a few, a few years before um, ahead of Christy. She was a senior when Christy was a freshman, I believe. And then, um, then Christy was, I think she's two years older than Rod. So, or it's one or two years. I don't know. One or two. Anyway. Okay. So back to what I was saying. So I was explaining to Colleen, Hey, no, I remember you and Titania arguing over this. And I know that Titania said there were results that proved she did have it. So I really need you to find these. And, you know, I told you guys that I have felt since, since January coming to TikTok, I have felt like I'm on a roller coaster journey of discovery of truth and, and to allow myself to get past being angry about all the other bullshit that's happened in these last seven, almost eight years. And I was, you know, I was spiraling because I was sheer frustration of just, I'm trying so hard to figure this all out and I know pieces are still missing and I'm attacked every day for it and I can't get the word out there and no one knows the truth. And it was so frustrating. And I came here with that, that and it was hard. Um, but I felt guided on my journey. And as you guys know, we lost our dear Christina last February. Um, February of 2023, and I have really felt her presence guiding me through this transformation to ultimate truth of this case. And I'm at a point where I believe I'm pretty, like 99% sure I've got it all worked out now. There's still some things that I'm working on, okay? But I felt like Christina's hand kept guiding us to certain things. Like when I would open up my drive to look for something specific, I wouldn't find what I was looking for, but I'd find something that made me go, oh fuck, I forgot about that. And start looking at other things. And it gave me lots more information to work on. So when Chris, when, sorry. So Colleen finally finds this document um, on the same night, funny enough, it was an epic night. On the same night, 
that I found the document and it's up everywhere floating around that HBO sent to Rod and Christie telling them that they had requested all these medical records and here they were on a USB drive and they included a USB drive for her attorney so that he would have it before her plea deal. And it was a shocking document to me. When I found it, I was shaking, totally shaking, shaking. And I was on the phone with Pink Hat, Sarah, and I just started crying. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't know I had this. And they didn't know I had this. And I think they'd been looking for it um, because the way I had it and the way I had the original documents like that the all the different documentarians had was because when I sat in Christie's living room for the very first time when I met her, I took that USB drive and I stuck it in my computer because we were having too many troubles printing them. And so I got everything that HBO had. Rowdy, shh. It's okay. I got everything that HBO had, including that letter. And that letter was sent to them before she took her plea deal. So I want you to understand when Mommy Dead and Dearest was actually being filmed was like almost day one, okay? That happened almost day one. She didn't take her plea for over a year and they'd already started filming and finishing Mommy Dead and Dearest. So it's what got her her plea deal. And there's a lot of stories to that. I don't wanna get into that today because it kind of goes into the drama side of things and I don't wanna talk about that today. But it 100% affected Nick's trial for sure, okay? So, um, that same night is the night that Colleen found the chromosome disorder results. And in that, it is a blood test, so this is not faked. Um, Dr. Le Pichon was the doctor. She had been seeing this doctor for quite some time for epilepsy. Um, and thinking about this, okay, so in 2000, in Missouri, I mean, in Louisiana, okay, they did a muscle biopsy on her leg, came back negative. In 2000, it was proven that she did not have muscular dystrophy and everyone knew it. And they continued, doctors, DD, everyone, continued to keep putting it in her file. And that, my friends, is medical fraud. And she used that as a way to gain financial gain, financial gain, to get financial gain, okay? That's all it was. She embellished her real freaking problems into being muscular dystrophy. And here's the thing that Colleen explained to me about muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy is a form of a chromosome disorder. So they knew she had a chromosome disorder all of her years of her life, but they didn't know what it was because they didn't have enough advancements in technology to pinpoint it yet. Thank you. It's nice to see you guys again, too. Thank you. Keep double tapping. Tap the screen. All those wonderful things, guys. I appreciate it all. Heart, love you so much, okay? Okay. So, in 2011, um, Gypsy only had one muscle biopsy. Yes, one muscle biopsy. That's all we have. Yes, one muscle biopsy. And that muscle biopsy was necessary because they were trying to figure out why she had weakness in her legs. And I want you to understand Everything Dee Dee told Rod and Christy that she had besides muscular dystrophy and leukemia, which were the two things that she used to push her financial gain, was 100% truthful, okay? She did have problems with her legs. She had problems with her eyes. She had problems with her ears. I mean, her yes, her ears. She had problems with her teeth. She had problems. All the problems. Um, who are you, just lurking bitch, if you want me to mod you? Um, I don't know who you are, so if you can send me a private message, it'll come across there. But um, I just thought you might, you know, I don't know who you are by that name. Sorry. Oh, it is a mod? Okay, thank you, baby. I'll mod her. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. Okay, so in 2000, when the muscle biopsy was done, they knew she didn't have muscular dystrophy, but they were still looking for a chromosome disorder, Okay. And they didn't know which one it was. 
So she's going and she is capitalizing on this. And I'm not saying that Dee Dee was a good person. I'm simply telling you she did not medically child abuse her child. Okay? There was no medical child abuse. There wasn't. It was all medically necessary. And what they were all looking for was what was the fucking chromosome disorder she had. Okay? Everything can be explained by that. The feeding tube, failure to thrive, all of it. Her angular face. And Mia has the angular face too. It's not as prominent. 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 Sorry. Prominent as gypsies. But this is a disorder. The 1Q21.1 deletion can be either extremely mild or extremely severe. So Mia is sitting on this mild side. She has some facial features that, that match it, the insunken eyes, how they're kind of crossed in. That's all part of it. But she has a rather mild case of this. Um, and if you look at Rod's other child by another woman, Jill, and his high school sweetheart that is six months younger than Gypsy, she has the same kind of angular face. It's, it's like this anteater, triangular face. And it causes the pinheadedness as well, okay? Um, it's my, and, it, and it's also in her file that she has microcephaly, which is a small head. And she does. She has a small head. And guess what? It's because of this chromosome disorder. And they've been telling her that she'd had microcephaly long before they ever figured out about the chromosome disorder, Okay. Hey, Natasha, I saw you join. Hey, everybody, thank you so much. Keep tapping. Alrighty, so talking about Gypsy's chromosome disorder, okay? So, <sighs> leukemia was never mentioned in Louisiana. Not ever. Not in any file. Not ever. It honestly was not mentioned until 2007. And it was originally mentioned as a... Um, a blood disorder of some sort, but they didn't say leukemia. Sorry, I'm having this massive reflex. And then a little bit later that year, leukemia at five years old came on the scene. And that's because they'd run their gamut with muscular dystrophy and they needed a new con. And that was the con they used to get from Missouri, I mean, from Louisiana to Missouri. And you know that picture that we all see, I'm gonna show you, you know, where she's sitting like this in that sink. You do realize that if she, her, if she was really paralyzed, she couldn't have sat in the sink like that? You, you guys realize that, right? So, um, that picture is the first time she shaved her head. She was 14 years old. She, if you look back at old videos of her and old pictures of her, she had a normal life in Louisiana. Yes, she ended up sitting in a wheelchair and stuff like that, but before that she had a lot of normal stuff. She did go to school. She had all kinds of things and she was very well, well involved in her family, including Rod and Christy. As much as they try to pretend that they weren't around. They were. The pictures on the 2020 and Lifetime Confessions prove that for you folks. So, in 2007, that's when leukemia comes on the scene. She don't have it. She never had chemo. Nothing. But, Oh man, I'm hungry. Um, but they're still trying to figure out what's wrong. They can't find what the chromosome <laughs> disorder is. Rowdy, hush. Thank you. They can't figure out what the chromosome disorder is. They know she has one. They keep putting it in there. It's a muscle tone of unknown etiology. You know, all these different etiology, all these different terms to explain. Hey, we don't know the fuck she has, but we know she has something. Okay, so in 2011, Dr. Le Pichon runs a genetic test and it comes back as yes, she has this deletion. And not only do they determine that she has this deletion, but Dee Dee goes in and gets tested herself because it is only passed down through genetics. Okay, it's not something that just randomly happens. It's a genetic disorder. Okay, and it's so there had to be a parent that carried either a recessive or a dominant gene for this. Generally, it's a recessive gene from what I understand. Now, I'm not a scientist, so don't quote me on that shit. But what, to my understanding of what I've read from rarechromo.org's pamphlet, and it's only four pages, guys, and it's very descriptive of everything. I suggest you go find it or go look for it where we posted it on our, on our socials. Okay, 
they are you guys tracking what I'm I'm picking I'm putting down right now do you guys know are you following along because I know I talk fast and I move fast so I don't want to lose you guys so if you if you guys are following along drop a one if you're a little bit confused ask a question and I'll get back okay I'll come back through it all right so 2011 Le Pachon knows now one she has a chromosome disorder which explains every single medical thing that was wrong with her her whole life okay and on top of that she is determined that Didi doesn't have it okay so the next line says they tried to reach out to the father and he couldn't be contacted okay the chromosome disorder, 1Q21.1 that Gypsy has, okay? So, um, so when we tell Christy about this, many, many moons later, Christy does nothing. She tells me she doesn't believe it and she would not have me attested. And in my opinion, allegedly, for entertainment and educational purposes only, I believe they knew about the chromosome disorder the entire time. And then they floated Munchausen by proxy to the media on purpose to get Gypsy a plea deal with HBO helping and Nike Stanfield knowing exactly what he was doing. Let me pause for effect on that. If you go to MJ Pack's thought catalog, you will see in real time that the original story was all about a girl and a guy unaliving her mother to be together. And then Christy Blanchard entered the largest Facebook group about the case in 2015 before the plea deal was taken. Stop it. Because she had the piece of paper that said Munchausen by proxy in it, and she floated it out to the media and with the medicine cabinet that she collected and gave to Mike Stanfield, they went and got her a fucking hell of a plea deal and threw the book at Nicholas. And it is reported in real time. I'm not making it up. You can even see on Megan Pack's thought catalog where it's one thing and then she says, Gypsy stepmother Christy Blanchard says Munchausen by proxy. And that's how this became a case of abuse and not a little girl who was so freaking spoiled rotten. She just didn't like mama telling her no about a 35 year old man who was a drug dealer married with kids that she wanted to go sleep around with all the time. Now, according to Natasha, and I can't verify this because I've never seen any of the interviews she's done. And I'm not saying she didn't do them because I have it on good authority from someone else that she did. That I, trust, that I trust, because back in the day, I said that I didn't think she did any of it because she never picked up the medical records. I know that for sure. She didn't go and get, or not medical records. She didn't pick up the, the uh, discovery file with a FOIA. So that was one of the big things back then that we were all arguing about. And But Natasha says that when she was in Springfield and she did take the first trip, that she interviewed three different men that Gypsy had been seeing and canoodling with for a long time. And Dan, you know, Dan doesn't play into this story in the narrative until Nick's appeal. See, we didn't think about Dan. We thought we knew the circumstances because we had Nick's confession the way we had it, right? So we didn't think about Dan. We didn't think he was important to the story. And I'm not talking about my theory of whether Dan did this or not, or Gypsy did this or not. I'm not talking about that, okay? What I'm talking about is the precedent that sets that Gypsy was not being abused, especially after 2011, because medical records end in 2011, except for some of her dental stuff and just regular everyday things she saw, saw her in the ER because she had some problems with her nose. Hey, guess what, guys? Sinus infections and ear infections are a symptom, a huge symptom of the chromosome deletion of 1Q21.1. Hmm, 
interesting because you know what? I thought that a lot. I was like, these, she goes to the freaking emergency room so much for a freaking cold. Why? Because it was happening because it's part of the chromosome disorder. I can't believe we missed it for so long, but it's because we were distracted. Remember, I told you it's all a distraction with these people. And we were looking all around trying to blame the doctors. Um, I'm not sure on the deviated septum. I'll have to check um, with Colleen or I'll look at the documents that I have and see. I think it is, but I'm not sure. Okay? Not sure on that. So, um, so we weren't looking at Dan as being anybody that made any sense in this at the time. And then when Nick's appeal, this last appeal came out, he testified. They deposed him and that set off a whole frenzy of people going, well, who the hell is Dan? Because Dan, Dan says that he and her were sexually active and that she's the one that brought the BD, you know what, you know what, roll, you know what, to him, not the other way around. Now I can say that Dan probably corrupted the hell out of her, but I don't know. Because one of the symptoms of the 1Q21.1 deletion is hypersexuality. The jail guard said she was hypersexual while she was in Greene County. Her, fa her, 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 her grandfather alleges that she touched him and he told her it was wrong. There was definitely something weird going on between Gypsy and Dee Dee taking the baths and all that crap. I'm sorry, there just was, if that was true. But I don't know if that's true or not anymore because I can't believe anything Gypsy says, okay? And I'm not saying that he did or didn't, her grandfather did or didn't essay her, but I've talked to the family and they don't think so. And I know that that was heavily clipped and I saw the shock in his eyes when she asked it. So I don't believe it. I do believe that she might have been sexually hyper, hypersexual and might have just been born that way because it tracks with everything else we know about her because she is supercharged by sexual intercourse. Look at what she's doing right now with Ryan and Ken and Dan and all the men at the Vision Con. You know, I'm telling you guys, it's so telling and it was blaring me in the face. And I, you know, what's really funny is three nights or so before Colleen and I had this discovery. Keep tapping guys and sharing, please keep tapping and sharing. Um, before we had this discovery, I was standing right here in this living room. And I was talking to my daughter, who is my daughter that went with me down to Louisiana to interview the Petrie family and the Blanchard family when we went down there. Thank you for the knowledge and time that you... Oh, thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Amy. I appreciate you guys. Amy, can I make you a mod? Is that okay? I'm going to make you a mod, baby, if that's okay with you. All righty. There we go. Okay. Um. Yes, yes, counting stars. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, fantastic. All my mods are here. Look at you guys showing up. My, my bitches with the assists. Anyway, okay, back to story time. There's a story there. Um, anyway, alrighty. So, I lost my train of thought. Where was I? Someone clue me in. I get, I get sidetracked. Sorry, guys. My chickens. <laughs> Sorry, ADHD brain, squirrel. <laughs> um, hypersexuality, okay. So thinking about this, um, it tracks with so much, okay? It really does. And it's, um, and it was, oh, I know what it's talking about, Sarah and I, okay? My daughter and I, when we went down there, you know, um, and we interviewed everybody, my daughter said to me, mom, something's not right. I don't trust these people. I, I just don't think we should do the story. And I was so in. I was in. They, they drug me under right away because I was so fascinated by this. And on top of it, it tracks a lot with my own personal experience with my mother and everything else that I've been through. So, you know, like a lot of you, we identified with Gypsy as this abused girl, you know, who had no way out and had, had no other choice but to unalive her mother because she couldn't get out, right? And it couldn't be any further from the fucking truth. It just couldn't be. So this hypersexuality thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope. Back to what I was saying. Good Lord. I'm all over the place today. Sorry. Squirrel. 
Um, so Sarah and I were talking the other night and I said, Sarah, I just feel like something, something is missing. We're missing like the biggest piece of this and I don't know what it is. Yes, I'm going to blame it on the eclipse today. Absolutely, Amy. Thank you. Um, so I said, I don't know what it is, Sarah. I just can't figure out what it is. It's staring me right in the face. I just don't know what it is. And she goes, I don't know, mama. I just don't know. But you're right. We don't have the answers. We just don't have all the answers, mom. You're right. And that's one of the reasons why we never rushed to do the documentary and the book. Because I just never felt we were finished. I never felt we had the right answers. I felt bullied into doing my 2019 podcast because everybody was saying we didn't have the medical records. We didn't know what we were talking about. We didn't have any of this information. So we rushed to do that podcast. And while I love our podcast and it will always have a special heart place in my heart because of Christina being on there and me being able to hear her words, I wished we'd waited. And when you see my book come out at the end of this month, which you guys can pre-order already on Amazon, um, you can pre-order the ebook. You cannot pre-order the paperback or the hardback that will be coming out. Um, the hardback may not come out on the 30th. Um, I definitely know the paperback and the ebook will be out. The hardback, we're trying to put some extra stuff in. We want to give you guys a really good book if you're going to pay for a hardback book. Okay, so, but um, thank you so much, Francher. Um, I really appreciate it. And thank you for all the hearts, guys. Love you guys so very much. You guys are super sweet. Um, so, um, so we just weren't rushing, but we rushed to do the podcast. And I had no idea what I was doing when I did that podcast. I'd never edited a damn thing. I'd never recorded anything like that. I was never in charge of something that way. I had done a couple of things. I did done my web series. We'd shot the pilot of that, but I hadn't really done a whole lot else yet you know, in the way of being behind the camera or an editor or a producer or anything like that. I hadn't really done it. Um, but I just jumped in, balls to the wall, jumped in. And we did our 13 episodes on Gypsy Rose. It's the first season of The Good Wives Guide to True Crime. Um, it's available on all platforms. And the book is going to be a transcription of it, along with some of our other commentary and an explanation from Colleen about this disorder that we found. OK, so she's going to go over the whole thing for part of the book that we're coming out with at the end of this month. So um, when we did that podcast. We made a lot of mistakes. We didn't have a lot of the information that we do have now. And. I look back to my first documentary and I'm like, oh my God, I've changed so much. My mind changed so much from all of that. I mean, I was damn near hysterical doing that, that um, documentary because I was so connected to Christy and Gypsy and them at that time. Um, and I, they had to stop filming because I was crying. And in that one, I was totally pro Gypsy because I came to this pro effing Gypsy, okay? I mean, hardcore. And I was crucified on Facebook for being so hardcore. In fact, some of my OGs are the ones that had to come to me when my falling out with Christy first happened and tell me, hey, we've seen this happen with her before and we think you've been, you've been set up and double crossed, baby. And I had no clue what had happened. I just had no clue. Um, so, you know, I just didn't know enough. We didn't have this information and I'd like to say, that we're to the point of all the answers? No, I think we're 99% close to all the answers, but I still feel like there's a couple missing pieces. And I have a feeling that certain people I know might have some of those missing pieces. And if we would stop arguing about everything and just talk about the case and figure out everything that happened in the case, we might get the actual truth, but we're too busy eating each other alive to do that. So, you got what you get from each different person. But, you know, I, I feel like Colleen and I have the most comprehensive look at this. Do I have the most objective look on the people involved? No, I don't. I am not objective where the Blanchards come. I'm not. I'm just not. Um, I, I can't be. Because of the damage that they caused me, my friends, my company, my colleagues. Okay. And I can't be objective anymore about the people. Yeah, Colleen is still involved. She's very, very busy. She is an assistant director to a nursing program and has two children under the age of three, four. Sorry, I think Katie's four. Um, 
So, yes, she is here. And if you go look at the YouTube channel, she actually explained this in my, my long two-hour thing about this, okay? She gives her explanation about this, and she will be included in the book. She's very, very busy, but yes. And she's been in Natasha's live lately, and she lurks around, but she doesn't have the time to dedicate to this like I do. She's a young mom working to, you know, a big career. So she was working two jobs. She's finally down to one job now. So, um, you know, when we started this, she was the stay-at-home parent, and she was going to school, and, and she was going to school. She was. Huh. I, I thought about that. She was going to school when we hired her. Um, but she wasn't anywhere close to her master's degree, for sure. Um, but she uh, was home, and so she had more time, but she doesn't anymore. And so, because now she's the breadwinner, and her husband stays home with the children because she could earn more money in her profession, you know, um, which is kind of what Craig and I did for a long time. Anyway, so I hope that that gives you guys some more Um, um, and I'm hoping that that, do you guys have questions? Would you like to hit the box? Huh? Huh? Hold on a second. Huh? Huh? Hold on a second. Nope. Unlock multi-guest. Check requirements. Oh, I can't. With this feature, you can check requirements. Do I not have the ability? Oh, go live. Okay, I have to go live on three separate days. Damn, for crying out loud. So if you guys have questions, drop them in the chat because I'm not going to be able to let you guys come up. It sucks. I don't have that privilege yet um, on this account, you know, since my other accounts were banned. Oh, my husband told me to, yeah, look outside. It's getting dark. <laughs> Yeah, I know. There's so many rules for doing shit over here on TikTok. TikTok's a messy app, guys. It's really, really messy. Um, all right, guys. So drop comments in the chat. If you want to talk about this, let me know. You know what, guys? Thank you, Bree. Um, I said I wasn't going to talk about any of it. But I want to tell you this, this experience with TikTok and the other content creators took me to my brink, took me all the way to the edge, further to the edge than I was in 2019 when we were dealing with the first set of stalkers and everything and all that drama. And I'm telling you, um, I almost fell over the edge. I almost tipped over the edge. And my family and my friends and Pink Cat Sarah helped a lot. And my mods that I have here today with me kept me to a point where I found peace. And then lots of stuff happened on April 1st. But I'm just gonna call that karmic justice. Cause I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. I know, Amy, and I'm, I'm sorry, and I know that I yelled at you guys for asking, <sighs> but it was like, I didn't know whether you were asking out of genuine concern or if you were asking to try to torture me because that's what they would do was send in hundreds of people to ask a question over and over again to try to rattle me and drive me crazy. I am strong, thank you very much, Counting Stars. My best friend for life. I've known her since fifth grade. I was in fifth grade and she was in third when we started Riverside Children's Theater together. And she told me one day, and this was a long time ago, long, long time ago. I was still living in California when she said this to me. And she said, baby, I don't know how you've gone through all the things that you've gone through and you're still standing, but man, your resolve is fucking huge. Look, I'm a lot guys. I am a naturally high vibrating person. Okay. I have an energy about me that is just off the charts and you either love me 
and you fucking hate me. There is no in between because I am the lighter shade of gray. Okay. And I want you to understand why I feel that I don't have to be objective about the people anymore while still being able, thank you, Alicia, while still being able to be objective about the case itself. Okay. Because I don't have to be objective about the people anymore. I know them for exactly who they are. And there's a reason for that because of what I went through in my life and the tragedies and the trauma and the things that I have. I have all the properties of being sociopathic, but I recognized them and I got help and I'm not sociopathic. Do I have sociopathic tendencies? Sure, everyone does. My husband does, my kids do, we all do. Some are higher than others, some are lower than others. But that is why I can recognize these people for what they are, because I see all the pieces. Like other people don't see them. I'm sorry, I'm not being braggadocious. I just can see it. It's like my brain is so chaos all the time, okay? It's a chaotic mess in there. It always has been. It's not because I'm doing drugs or I'm not on my medicine or I'm having a mental crisis. It's just my head is noisy. I talk about it like a computer. I feel like I have 95 tabs open at all times. One of them is playing Christmas music and three of them are going da -da 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 all the time. And I can't find the noise. And if I can quiet the noise sometimes, I get really clear on what I'm thinking about. And what happens is you guys saw me do these little meltdown sessions. Those meltdown sessions are my thinking <laughs> sessions. And you guys got to watch the thinking process. And I don't know if you ever noticed, but when I had one of those little meltdowns, did I not come up the next day with absolutely something completely different and new and oh my god how did i miss this and you guys were like oh my god how did we miss this yes because that's what my brain does so when i'm having that freak out that stuff it's my brain processing each little thing that i'm trying to put together and i've always been really good at puzzles um like when i was a little girl i could do five thousand piece puzzles by like like six or seven years old my mom would just sit them in front of me and I'd just do them. I loved puzzles. So chaotic with those trying to hurt you. Yes, yes, thank you, thank you. It was, it was very chaotic and I'm super, super ser sorry. I'm super sorry you guys got to see that part of me. It was never intended. I did not mean to get that messy, but it happens, okay? Um, and uh, I got lost. <laughs> <laughs> I got lost again. But um it was hard. And I thought I wasn't going to make it through. But uh on April 1st, a bunch of shit just happened and it was the April Fools Day of all April Fools Days. And a lot of shit came out. I mean, so much information, Reddit don't even know how to process it all, they say. And I'm still processing it. Because I still don't know what happened in all the drama in the seven to eight years we've been doing this. Okay? I don't know how we got so messed up. I don't know how it got so out of hand. I know a person that did it. It's one person. I'm not going to say her name today. But we all know. I've talked about it. And a lot of that came forward. And at first, I was like, what the fuck? How is this happening? And then I just started laughing, laughing. And I hadn't laughed in so long when we were doing this. I wasn't laughing with Colleen or Christina for so long. I didn't laugh at home very often because I was fucked up from all of this. Yeah. Call me a little crazy. Call me a little unhinged. But I was put through fucking hell. And when it all came to this boiling point, I was sitting there 
that morning and I had told Sarah that it all felt so anticlimactic. You know, because I haven't been responding to what they've been saying about me, right? I hadn't been engaging. I hadn't been pushing back at them. Maybe some little snarky things here or there, a comment here or there. You know, I've participated in Reddit some and stuff. But um, I wasn't really responding. And I know it was driving them all mad. Absolutely bonkers. Because they didn't, couldn't figure out what the hell was going on with me. And that was my reset. And I had told Sarah, you know, I just feel empty. I feel like we're at the end. And... It's it. This is it. This is it. This is all that happens. And uh, yes, it was, Amy, the best thing I could have done. Because I took a step back and I was able to see it all for what it was. And uh, so it wasn't much longer that I started getting all these messages telling me what the hell was going on. And I ended up in Natasha's life on a fluke again. Because uh, Colleen was in there and I wanted to make sure I supported her so nobody was attacking her because they've been trying to intimidate her. And I, uh, I saw who was the, the uh, PR person and I knew who it was. And then I started talking to her. And man, did I learn a lot of shit that I didn't know. With proof. With proof. We all have made mistakes in this eight years, myself included. But I'm sure shit, no, I did not alive anyone. And I didn't cover it up and I didn't lie about it. My past is my past. It has no relevance on whether or not I'm credible to tell you about the information that my team and I have spent seven to eight years putting together. We have talked with every expert in the field about this case. I have talked to my professors. Colleen has talked about it at her school with her professors and as, a, as part of her lectures for nurses, okay? I didn't make all the right fucking moves. I can be a mean, cold fucking bitch if you push me there. Okay? But my mama taught me one thing and one thing that stuck with me like hell. You don't start no shit, but you better finish that shit. Don't you let no one walk on you. And she did that after she watched me get dragged across the playground by my hair at five. And she came out and was she mad at the girls that were dragging me by my hair? No. She was mad at me for not standing up for myself. Well, I never did that again. You may say the worst things about me. I don't give a shit. Because you know what? Some people say the best things about me. Both are probably true. I match energies. Act accordingly. Who's Cody? (laughs) I just saw Cody finish the story last night. I don't know what you're talking about. Thank you. Thank you. Um... I try and it took a lot of effort. It is not my only, this is not only my work. There was a lot of people along the way, including discussions on Facebook, uh, my, my YouTube channel, my discussions in college, Colleen's discussions in college, my, my followers, my, my team that we had, every single one of them at some point in time contributed something, something. We all had their best intentions at heart starting out with this, I believe. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't watch wrestling. I just thought it was funny. Um, that's really funny, Princess. I saw you told me that and I was like, nope, I don't watch wrestling, but I thought it was a funny clip, so I used it. Rowdy, hush. Oh, guys, it's getting real dark. Can you see out my, my window? It's getting dark out there. So... Um, Thank you for listening to the podcast. Um, If you are listening to the podcast and you don't know a whole lot about the podcast, you need to know that a lot of the information in the podcast is inaccurate because of the fact that we didn't know everything we know today. Um, But what Colleen reads as far as the medical things, it's very accurate. She reads exactly what was done and they were all 
Now we know medically necessary, okay? So you have to take the podcast with a little bit of a grain of salt. Um, but listen, definitely go to our YouTube, find the one about the chromosome deletion and watch that whole thing. Because Colleen and I and Sarah walk from 2000 to 2011 through the most important parts of Gypsy's actual medical files. And it proves not only does it prove that she didn't ha she wasn't medically child abused, but it proves that the medical fraud was knocking on their door. And it was only a matter of time before. Thank you for watching my Annie special. Appreciate it. Um, it was, you know, she, uh, damn it. I just, I just got sidetracked again. Damn it. <laughs> um, I hate when that happens. Just give me a second. Either somebody drop it in the chat of what I was saying or, or give me a second and I'll come back to it. I know I will. Um, fraud was knocking on the door. Thank you. Thank you. Fraud was knocking on the door. In 2009, when Dr. Steele, supposedly, he says he called it in. I do not believe that he called it in to DC, DCFS. I do not. I believe that one of his nurses did. And then he covered his ass because there was an anonymous call. And even HBO in their letter to Christie said that they could not get the records from Dr. Steele, which we did end up getting. Christie gave us those. Um, and... Uh, they said that that they could not verify that he was the one who called in the welfare check. But in 2009, guys, the gig was up. Everyone knew the gig was up. It's the same year that she was caught for the first time with a man at VisionCon. That first man, and I don't know if that's Dan or not. I've never been able to confirm so if somebody does know whether it's Dan or not, please drop that in the chat. Natasha, if you're still watching, maybe you know. Um, but I couldn't verify that that was Dan. But that's also, you know, the BB gun incident supposedly happened then. That's when the dog leash supposedly happened. That's when she was being smacked in the face and called us. Yeah, I can believe that some of that actually happened because, um, hello, if my daughter at 18 years old, 17 years old, was trying to date a 35 year old man, drug dealer with kids, I think I might've smacked her in the face too. I'm sorry, just gonna say it. I might've called her one too, especially if she kept doing it after I told her not to. And that girl was running all over town. We got tons of people talking about that. And I used to think that was all bullshit. It ain't bullshit. She's bullshit, but it ain't bullshit. In 2009, the hospital in Springfield, Missouri, wanted a guardianship paper from the courts. And she wouldn't give it to him. And Beckerman, our friend Dr. B, Dr. B, took her from Springfield and moved her care to Kansas City, where she originally was metaflighted in, you know, angel flighted in um, from Louisiana, from Katrina. And they started all over again there. But that's where Dr. Le Pachon came on scene. And she had been treating her since 2009. And in 2011, she found the chromosome disorder that they'd been looking for for 23 years. Or 20, 21 years at that point. 2011, 20, 12, 13, 14, 15, 23, 19 years, I guess. 19 years. 19 years. They had been looking for that. 19 years. 20 or something like that okay I'm not good at math it's not my thing but uh they found it and she continued to see Dr. Le Pouchon all the way up until 2015 when um she posted on her secret account Snow Gypsy about raising funds to go to the convention that they were going to wherever I think it was Miami Florida somewhere maybe and it was in June of 2015. Guess who never made that? She'd already been planning her mom's schmurder for two years while she was making those posts, talking about how much she loved her mama, 
she's her best friend, they just da 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 da, they're going all over the world together, they're going on these trips still. Look, do I think that Dee Dee is the best person on the fucking world? No. But I want to ask you guys something. In my letter from Gypsy, one of the emails I got from her in prison, she specifically asked me not to make her mother out to be a monster because she loved her and she was still her mom. And I want to ask you guys something. If she didn't want her mother to look like a monster, why is she trying so fucking hard to make her mother look like a monster? Because she didn't make her mother look like a monster in her interrogation video. She didn't. She didn't. There was no mention of abuse or anything like that until after Mommy Dead and Dearest came out and she took her plea deal. They snowed the fucking world. And I think Gypsy had a lot more hand in her mama's death than, you know, she says. I don't believe she was in the bathroom. No. 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 I'll tell you my theory on that another time. The interrogation video says it all. It does. And if you listen to both of their, their interrogation videos, which are on our YouTube, there's all 16 hours of him sitting there. And then there's, you know, the four hours of hers. They're very telling. Both of them. Both of them. Have you ever showed that letter publicly? Which, which one? The HBO letter or the letter uh, or the letter from Gypsy? What do you think about Gypsy and Dan and Christy and Ryan? Uh, Gypsy and Dan. I'm not going to talk about Gypsy and Dan. Are you meaning Gypsy and Ken though? Or Christy and Ryan? Are you meaning really Dan? Um, I don't know which one you're, I, I want to make sure before I start talking, which ones you're talking about. Um, you know how I feel about Christy. I don't even want to talk about her today. It's not about her today. Ken. Okay, good. Okay. Um, I'm going to release a lot of information about Ken today or tomorrow. I don't know which one. When I ever get it to the Patreon, I have over 273 screenshots and letters and everything between me and Christy, Christy and, and Ken, Ken and me, Ken and Gypsy, me and Gypsy, all re pertaining to Ken. Um, well, my theory is not my own and I don't want to share it without my team's approval and talking to them and making sure that it's exactly what we want to say. So just so you know. Okay. But Ken, I was not a fan. I thought he was a douche. I still think he's a douche. I think he's a douche. Okay. I think he's a douche. Do I need to say any more? You know, I didn't like him. From the second he came on scene, I did not like him. And I told him I didn't like him. And I told Gypsy I didn't like him. And I told Christy I didn't like him. And you're going to ask me what business of it was mine. Well, you know what? I was considered at that time by Christy, own words, a member of their family. And she loved me. You know that love bombing she does. You know a lot about him, do you? Francher, how do you know a lot about Ken? Um, do I think he truly cares about Gypsy? I don't know. The jury's still out on that one. Rachel says he does. Gypsy's ex-best friend. Oh, okay. Um, Rachel's best friend. Rachel, R G Gypsy's ex-best friend Rachel um, likes him and says that, hey, thank you, um, says that, um, that he's a good guy and that he loves her. But I think, just like Jezebel said, I think he sees dollar signs. Because originally, they broke up because, you know, he couldn't deal with the spotlight. Meanwhile, dumb fuck, I told you to stay the fuck out of the spotlight, and you had to run your fucking mouth, and that's how you ended up on the front page of In Touch. It wasn't me. That wasn't my fault. That was his fault. His fault. And I have the screenshots to prove it. Screenshots to prove it. Um, now, Ryan 
How's he even working if he's with Tipsy? I don't know. Um, right. If he loved her, he would let her deal with her marriage first. Exactly. And he, don't let us not forget, 12 days before their wedding, he was still lurking around her. That is not a good dude. I'm sorry. Okay, look. If you will get married to somebody in prison because they did a minor thing or, you know, let's say they robbed a convenience store. Okay. Do I think that's a good, uh, that's a good, a good life choice for you to marry somebody in prison? No, I do not. If it's something like your baby daddy got, got tied up and went to prison and you guys wanted to make sure that you still, you know, could provide for each other and everything and you get married in prison and that's your thing. Great. But I'm sorry. These two yo-yos went looking for a girl who smurdered her mama. And we don't think that's sus. Come on. That's sus. That's real sus. Ryan said, both of them, both of them say they watched Mommy Dead and Dearest and they both were so thought she was so cute and they wanted to talk to her. Can you, anyone in the room, anyone, anyone, tell me where in Mommy Dead and Dearest did you ever think the gypsy was cute? Don't worry, I'll wait. Anybody? No, she looked like a goofy ass two year old. by the way, that yacht, that's a millionaire's yacht in Colorado. And she was on it twice, folks. Twice. Twice. But you know, tell me again how Dee Dee abused the fuck out of her. No. Dee Dee gave her a fucking hell of a life, man. Gave her a hell of a life. A life no other kid, sick kids ever had. A life no other sick kid would ever have. You know why? Because sick kids like that, real sick kids that have like really bad things, they don't have the energy to go on 50 bazillion fucking trips across the world. They're lucky if they get one. I think she, okay, so you said, I think she has a unique beauty now, but not back then. Okay, I can, I can see that now. Sure, I don't find her attractive at all, but... I mean, I think that's just the ugly coming out. My, my grandma said pretty is as pretty does. So she ain't got no pretty in her. Sorry. Not sorry. She's not scared of needles for tats or nose jobs. She's not scared of going under the needle and not waking up. Mm, use your thinking caps here. That dog don't hunt. These people have shown us exactly who they are. Some of y'all just don't want to believe it. I didn't want to believe it. It took me three years. It took me three years. And then it took me another four and a half to figure out how bad it was. And this story, this gypsy story, it's far from over. And it's not the last we've heard of Springfield. There's a reason why Mike Stanfield is gunning for me. There's a reason why they all want me shut up. And that's because I know too much about them and that town and all the shenanigans that were going on in it, not just Gypsy. I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice too, sorry. <clears throat> I think that Ken should have left her the fuck alone until she left her husband for real. That's what I think. But now back to Ryan. Now I know a little bit about Ryan and their relationship and how it went down. So according to Rachel, um, he came on scene. It was genuine. He reached out to her on the dare, the whole thing. And, but the reason after that annulment, suspicious, just saying that's sus too. Why is there a name change in Arkansas? 
I don't know. I don't know. But Rachel says that the whole reason that Ryan stuck around and they went ahead with the, you know, the whole thing was because of Melissa Moore, the executive producer for Lifetime Confessions. And so why did Ryan take an exit all of a sudden? Do I buy that she locked herself in a bedroom because she, he was je- or in a bathroom and she was scared to death and Mia had to come get her because he was jelly about the time that she was spinning with Rod? Bullshit. I call bullshit. I call bullshit. I call bullshit. Okay? I don't believe that for one fucking fake second. Not one. Nope. Um, I think if it did go down where he's banging on the door and she had to call Mia, I believe the daddy that he didn't like her spending time with, with one fucking rod. Thank you. I've got my censorship shirt on too. I love this shirt. Um, I mean... If my wife were talking to an ex-fiance that 12 days before my wedding was a problem, and I knew that he already had a ticket to fly into Louisiana, because he did, I might have beat down the fucking door too. But do I believe that Mia went and rescued her in the middle of the night? Fuck, no, I don't. And there I said it. I don't believe anything that comes out, comes out of any of their mouths. Not a fucking thing. Not one thing. Just not one thing. How are you, Fancy? I know you've been live since I was in here about an hour ago, maybe four minutes. Yeah, I'm doing great. Her eyes look rested and soul looks renewed. Thank you. I am. I am absolutely. Guys, I told my friends and my husband and my family yesterday. I have not been this happy in so, so, so long. Probably damn near 20 years. Yeah, I think that stress when it comes off of you takes those years off, don't you think? Thank you, thank you. Do you like my new glasses? I did. You know, Francher, I was telling you guys when I first came here that God worked really hard on my soul last year. You know, and uh, um, well, she had already planned to leave in the middle of the night with Mia while he was sleeping. That was already in plans. Yeah. So, um, um, I told my family, you know, I I felt like just this huge weight was lifted the other day. It just all came coming, tumbling to the ground. And I, I just laughed and laughed and I have not been, I have not stopped laughing for, for a whole week (laughs) because vindication feels good. Validation feels good. I was not crazy. I was drove crazy. But they didn't get me all the way. They tried. They tried every which way they could. Every which way they could. But I beat them. I won. Like I always do. Just takes me some time some time and now they all get their karmic justice I tried to warn them I cared about every single one of those people I want you to know that you remember that when you go listen to them talk about me they all sat at my table at one point in time because I allowed them to they all came to me willingly I did not go seek any of them out And they came back four and five times to me. And the biggest one, my bitch upstairs, 
told me if I ever, if you ever let her back in your life, I'll come home, I'll come down there and kick your ass personally. And that was the first person who reached out to me when she passed away. So you just remember those people that tell tales about me, they once sung my praises too. Okay? Okay. All right, guys. Questions about anything you want to know. <laughs> um, I don't know what time it is because I can't see on here. Does anybody know what time it is Eastern? Because um, I still got to do some things around the house. But I'm enjoying talking with you guys. I've missed being here with you guys. I have missed it. 325. Thank you. Okay. So I got about maybe 30 more minutes. I can sit and chat, talk the shit with you guys. Have you been medicating as well? I know that helps out with stress. Um, actually yes and no. Okay. So if you want to know a little bit about my journey with my mental health issues, um, so at one point in time, they had me on nine different prescriptions for mental health issues um, for depression and bipolar disorder, which I've been found that I don't have bipolar disorder now. Um, it was more environment than anything else for me. But um, every time I'd go into the doctor to tell them a medicine wasn't working because, uh, hello, I've got the redhead gene and medicines don't work real well for me. Um, I, uh, they just add another one on until one day I had driven my children to school and back home and I woke up in my driveway and I didn't remember any of it. And I went into my doctor and I said, that's it. I went off every fucking medication that you have me on for psychotic shit right now. And he said, I don't recommend that. And I said, well, you have two choices, sir. You can either help me do it properly so I don't die or you can be the doctor my husband sues when I die because you didn't help me do it properly. And he did. And I learned my triggers and I learned how to cope better. And I went unmedicated for a very long time and I sustained until it mounts up to be too much for me in my life. I have a lot of my own personal issues. My husband struggles from early onset dementia. He has bipolar disorder. My children all have certain issues. We're all neurodivergent, you know, so I think considering what I've been put through in my life and in this situation, I've actually done pretty fucking good. So, um, I went to my doctor in January when I started coming to TikTok and I talked to her about some anxiety medication. I just wanted something that if I was having a difficult day, I could take it, you know, the whole thing. So I take that every day. And we upped it a little bit so that I could be more relaxed. And we also added a different medication um, for um, helping with some of it that was not a mood stabilizer, but something that would help me be more, more relaxed and things like that. And then they changed my muscle relaxers as well. So I'm not in as much pain as I was in. So yes, a lot of things came together all at one time for you to see the calm fancy you're seeing today. And this is me as calm as I get. This is it. Aww. <laughs> um, so, I mean, this is, this is calm as I get. I'm just a high energy, high maintenance person. I got a lot of drive in me and I'm not for everybody. I'm much muchiness. Do you think your relationship with Gypsy would have been better if, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Christy played me against Gypsy. She played Gypsy against me. She played Ken against Gypsy. She played Ken against me. She played me against Ken. Uh, yes. Christy is the pot stirrer. That's what she does. And she doesn't have to do anything. She doesn't even ask them to do anything. These people willingly do it for her. That's the fucked up part of it. And then she just sits back and fucking laughs. <laughs> Look at what all the people are doing in my name. It's fucking sick. It's fucking sick. She toys with people's lives. That's what these people do. I told you. 
I know who these people are because I walked with these people for seven years in the trenches through hell. And I've seen the loving side of Christy Blanchard. I saw that for three years, my friends. Three years. We were as thick as thieves. And then she showed me her real self when she put a stalker on me twice and tried to destroy my life. I did. I loved her. I loved her. And I've been talking with Jasmine, the fake PR, about that a lot. I told Ron Brown I loved her. I loved them all. I even told Ken, when you see the text messages, I told Ken, I may not like you, but I'm here for the family. And so that means you too. So you get my protection too. And when I was a PR, I did a damn good fucking job. Let me tell you because there's a lot of shit that could have come out about them that wasn't true, that people were running with, that I shut the fuck down. But some people do not listen because fame, fortune, and power seems to be what they want. And that's exactly it. That's exactly it. It's never been about that for me. I've never wanted to be famous or rich. I've always just wanted to be in the industry because I love doing it. And that's why you get in the industry, okay? Because if you get in the industry, the entertainment industry, because you want to become rich and famous, you're in it for the wrong fucking reasons and you're probably on Diddy's fucking list. Okay? If you didn't get into the industry because you ate, drank, and breathed this industry because you fucking loved it because it's in your fucking soul, it ain't for you, kid. It ain't for you. I only ever wanted Rowdy. Oh, look, it's all bright again, guys. So my, my son passed. Rowdy, it's okay. No. Hey, come here. Come here. Come here, buds. Oh, Mama's got to shave you today. Oh, I got lots of stuff to do still. But this industry broke my heart. Stop. 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 What did I say? Go lay down. Be quiet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this industry broke my heart over and over and over again. And it's currently breaking my heart right now, watching what's going on. They got a serious moral issue going on over there in Hollywood. And I used to be really mad at my mom and my husband for keeping me from the industry that I loved. But today, today, I know why. Because it would have ate me up and spit me out back then. God's plan, not mine. God's timing, not mine. This is all I've ever wanted to do. All I ever wanted to do was tell stories in whatever capacity that I could. I loved writing and dancing and, and music and, and everything and, and acting and singing and I've, I've drawing, I've done it all. I've wanted to be creative my whole life. It's all I ever wanted to be. I didn't want to do anything else. I didn't want to be anything else. Will I be friends with Ryan again? No, that's a hell no. I'll tell you what my friend, my OG friend said. Do you know what she said to say to her when she comes back around in a month? Hey, funny, it's been a month. It's been one month, one, one single month that that took to fall the fuck apart. She told me to tell that bitch to suck my, there you go. No, never. Fuck that bitch. Fuck them all. None of them will ever eat at my table again. Not a single one of them. And they don't deserve to. I saw a meme the other day. No, I saw a TikTok the other day. And it said, talking to me is a privilege. And you don't have privileges. There you go. And I have one of the most forgiving hearts ever. 
I take people back I never should have. Hence the ex-partners running around. So I learned that lesson a long time ago when God closes a fucking door. You fucking listen. You fucking listen. Yeah. And God took every single person out of my life last year that ever said some shit about me behind my back. And then he brought me my birth family and a couple of friends. And I'm thankful for all of them. Funny thing is they aired all the tea and showed their cards and you played the game and won. Thank you, Donna. I think I did. I think I did. Because the cream of the crop rises to the top. And I put in way too much fucking work and Colleen put in way too much fucking work and Chris, Christina put in way too much fucking work and my daughter put in way too much fucking work for, we to, for me to allow some bitches on the fucking internet to take everything I ever wanted from me. Fuck you. Shame on you for trying. Shame on you for trying. Well, she did. And then I'm assuming Christy stopped mowing her lawn or detailing those cars and called her back and she took down. But it's on my videos. And it's all over Reddit. Ah! Fake PR reach out to you because she knows me. She knows me very well. And I adore her. She's a good person. She only used a fake name for a week and a half because it was the only way to come to the resolution that we have right now. And I don't know about everybody else, but I'm sure fucking happy for the peace. So here's someone life speak about the daughter in the hospital and she even, hold on, what, what? About the mom and daughter in the hospital, and she even said you, huh? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, um, I don't know what you mean by that, so if you want to tell me what you mean by that. New things only people on this inside would know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She did. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay, guys. Um, if you haven't, I, what is the fake PR playing Chris me? I'm not going to talk about the fake PR. I, I'm not just, I'm Jezebel. I'm just not going to talk about it. It's not my story to tell right now. Okay. So thank you, but I'm not going to talk about it. I, I just not, um, I'm having a good day and I'm not going to allow that to drag me down. It's not my story to tell right now. So you guys will see a lot about it. Eventually it'll all come out. It will, but not right this minute. Um, just be thankful for the peace. And watch those idiots turn on each other like flip flops. Never seen anything like it. Thank you, Angel. I appreciate that. Thank you guys for tuning in today. If you haven't already pre ordered our book, it is available on Amazon. It's called The Companion 2. And no, it's not the second edition, it's just 2 The Good Wife's Guide to True Crime. You can pre order the ebook currently, right now. And oh, thank you about my glasses. Um, and if you are waiting for the hardcover or paperback, I know the paperback will be out by the 30th. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll have the hardback done by then, but I don't know. Um, oh, I know. I used to have a huge whiteboard and a bulletin board and all that shit, just like, you know, the in the in SVU where they do the strings and all that shit. I used to have all that, but we got a smaller house and I don't have anywhere to put it now. Because hmm. my office space is gone right now. So, um, but anyway, order the book. Listen to the podcast. Go check us out on all social medias. Everywhere else, we're under Good Wives Net. And keep coming back. Ask your questions. Guys, it's not that I didn't want to answer questions. It's not that I didn't like that I can't answer your simple questions because you're new to the case. You know, I got to a point where I was so tired of talking about the same pieces of this case that I forgot that some of you had not been around forever. And I was a little short with some of you. 
And I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for that. Okay. Thank you for the hearts and the love and the puffs and the, ah, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I love those. This is what is why I love TikTok. I love the little gifts. They're so cute. They're just stinking cute. <laughs> and by the way, TikTok, this one was only for you. I didn't do YouTube or, or Facebook today. I'm going to repost the replay so you guys can go back and see it because I talked about a lot about the chromosome disorder and different things. But um, I am going to go enjoy the rest of my day. And I hope you do the same. Make sure to go check out my YouTube channel. If you want more information about Gypsy Rose, we've got plenty of it on there. Check out the podcast and make sure you pre-order the book or when on the 30th, Grab that paperback, guys. Keep coming back. We've got a lot coming forward to you. I know Sarah and I are going to be talking about Quiet on the Set this week. We're going to be talking about Natalia Grace this week. I intend to talk about Delphi this week and Crystal Rogers this week. And if there's anything else that happens to pop off, oh, P. Diddy. We'll be talking about Diddy as well. Will you please stop barking at anything that moves? Ugh, you're annoying. I love you, but you're annoying. Please go do all of that. Be safe out there, and I love you. Mwah, 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 mwah. And thanks for tuning in to the Good Wives Network, coming soon to Roku, Apple, Android, and Amazon. Bye, guys. Mwah. Okay, now how do I get the heck out of here?